people um, ask us, well, can they start with a smaller battery system and upgrade? Absolutely. Can you start with a grid tie system and then add batteries later? Absolutely you can. The thing is that you will pay a little bit more because the inverters needed for a, for a grid tie system and, and um, for a battery system are different. So you'll have to usually add in an extra inverter or charge controllers, etc. Uh, the battery system equipment. So you'll be paying more in the long run. However, it's really your decision of what you want to do now. Something to consider when you're thinking about solar battery versus non-battery systems and solar in general is your roofing and the amount of space you have on your roof. Uh, you will need more space if you if you want to have a battery system because you'll need more power to be generated to run the house in the days but also charge your batteries whereas with grid tie system you're just passing that energy through um, while also uh, bringing in JPS at the same time to offset. Some of the type of roofs that are the best for solar, uh, standing seam is our favorite and the best. It's the metal roofing with the seams that stand up. We can clamp right to those. You don't have to have any penetrations. Slab roofing is great. Shingle roofing is fine. We have to penetrate those roofs, but our teams are trained in roofing and ceiling. The roof that gives us the most trouble and is probably the worst for solar energy is, as you guessed it, uh, clay tile roofing. That's because clay tiles uh, have to be removed and then we put on the solar racking and the tiles replaced. Oftentimes all those tiles can break. So you're replacing tiles as well. We prefer not to do clay tile roofing if we don't have to. Um, so if you're building and you want to have solar, we encourage you to stay away from clay tile roofing. We encourage you to use standing seam roofing or slab. Uh, so those are some of our recommendations for the roofing um, also, you want these roofs to face south as much as possible because we want to face the solar system south. We can also use the east-west roofs, but we try and avoid the north roof. Keep that in mind when you are, uh, if you're in new construction. Also, um, you can talk to us about what else, what other things we recommend that you can do in, in, in the construction phase to help you uh, prepare your home or your building to be solar ready for when you're complete. We need backup power because we live in a hurricane zone and we have a grid that occasionally we have blackouts. So if we get hit with a powerful hurricane in Jamaica and you have a solar system and your roof survives, you'll be able to have power if the grid is down for two, three, four months like it was in Antigua or Puerto Rico recently when massive hurricanes ripped through those islands and their power company's grid went down for months and months. Um, even to get fuel for generators was a problem. So the people with solar benefited heavily. And that's why in Puerto Rico now, all new mortgages, you can include a solar system with some backup power because it helps the economy grow. What happened in Puerto Rico is that a third of the, uh, I think a third of the island uh, left and moved to the States, mostly Miami, after that devastating hurricane because the, some places are without power for 12 months. Jamaica could, Jamaica's economy would be devastated worse than what pa the pandemic has done to us should we get hit with a terrible hurricane. So we really need and we need government policy to encourage and financial institutions to encourage resilient backup power financing for all Jamaicans so that when you buy a new house, you can include solar in your mortgage and you can stretch that loan over 30 years. That payback on your solar is minimal and your cash flow positive from day one. Um, longer term lo independent loans for solar or using the equity within your house to then use that to buy a solar battery system so that you can get rid of, of your light bill and then also have backup power in case of an emergency for your family. Um, it's very important to have backup power, especially living on these islands where we are um, so isolated from uh, the rest of the world should we have a, de a, a, a devastating storm. Uh, we want to be as independent as we can from all utilities. That includes uh, your electricity and your water. So those are things to really consider when you're looking at um, battery versus non-battery system when it comes to solar for your home. One other great benefit of having uh, a battery system uh, with solar for your house and you have a, a, a large enough generator is to include this generator into the solar system to work to to work it in as, as we have at Solar Buzz for a few clients. This is called a microgrid. What happens is that if the, if the generator is big enough to run the house and also charge up your solar batteries, should the batteries run out for any reason, this generator comes on, charges the batteries, and runs the house at the same time. Once the batteries are fully charged, the generator turns off, and solar goes back to running your house. This means that you'll never touch the electrical grid. Um, we do have clients who had bills of $80,000 a month and now get bills of $500 a month. What you want to do is also have ample roof space so that your generator isn't coming on often. It's just in rare cases when it, it goes off in emergencies because the price of fuel is expensive. So you don't want your generator coming on three to four times a day. You want 
your generator coming on in a rare occasion, once, maybe twice a week, if you don't have enough substantial roof space to, to carry you through the night. So again, something to consider when thinking about doing a non-battery solar system versus a battery solar system.